was fed up that day I saw you. That's what it was. <laughs> I probably wasn't had, had enough. And I'm, I'm hot. I'm hot. You was fed up. That's what it was. To the end of the road. <laughs> I like that. I got you. Uh-huh. It was over. It was over. It was it was cut. Cut. I'm out of here. Damn this. I gotta go clock in. I gotta go to work. <laughs> I kind of disagree with the public display because I think that there could come a time where, you know, it could cause more harm, you know, to the child, you know, being such a public face, right, you know, of 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 their decisions that I think I, I'm big on privacy. I'm really big. Like as open and as transparent as I am, there are still some things that are very near and dear to me that I would never like feel comfortable talking about or displaying in a public setting. And I think a lot of what goes on in your household should be just that, you know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to decisions of of life like that. You know what I'm saying? Now my thoughts are that I applaud him for being, you know, accepting and, and warm and embracing his son because uh, and now daughter, um, because so many kids never had that and, and, and it ended tragically for them. Mm-hmm. And so many adults are battling with the the choices that their parents made with not accepting them and their decisions and their sexuality. And it has led to, I think, some adults that are torn and broken and and they don't do well in life because of that you know because of <clears throat> how their you know their parents you know shun them and their communities shun them and all those things you know but we come from you know a I think an upbringing, most of us who are in our 30s and so forth now, our parents are mostly in their 60s or approaching 60s. So, you know, you have to think about it. You know, religion and Christianity was way more prevalent in most of our communities as we were growing up than they are now. You know what I'm saying? Right. <clears throat> Which is why I think that ultimately I, I'm a I'm a big advocate of, cho- of, of choice in all things. You know, I'm pro-choice in every aspect of life, if, if that's what you choose and that's what you want, you know, and, and if you're comfortable enough and, and, and OK with with, you know, the scrutiny that may come with it, as long as it makes you happy, hey, do it. And it's not my place to say that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. I feel that if, if that if that's how you feel that your life should be lived and live it more power to you. Um, I do wish that they would afford more privacy because it, this is a child we're talking about. Yeah, I had that same sentiments. I thought like that's a child. I, I don't know yeah. if a child is saying, hey, dad. Go go make a public yeah go live yeah go, hey, I'm gonna say it one more time <laughs> right put, pull your phone out <laughs> right I, I don't know if that's what's going on right that's my only issue I don't mm-hmm. have an issue with nobody's parenting I'm like right. you could doubt me right. I, I, I'll 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 be his son for a little mm-hmm. while I don't mind right. got good money yeah. <laughs> that part I'm good right. with that you know, I don't have yeah. a problem with yeah. Dwayne Wade you know what I'm right. saying he's a good player so I don't, I don't know um. Mm-hmm. I didn't really, but you have to also think about the dynamics here. I mean, the, in their status, you know, his celebrity status yeah, and so forth. Yeah. And there are some things that, you know, I think that once you get to a certain place in life, you don't really care what so, a, a lot of people, you know, you don't have the. In other words, I don't think that he has the same influences that some of our parents right, have had right, right, right. in the decisions and in the way they chose to raise us, like. He's Dwayne Wade. Like, I mean, yeah, <laughs> at the right. same time, given his status, anything that could happen, you have to also think about it. It could be him controlling the narrative. So my only so the only <clears throat> issue I got with, with, with all that is that I don't know mm-hmm. if that's because they've been in the, the news so much for like frivolous stuff. I don't yeah. know if they're trying to get some kind of mm-hmm. second income or right. just be the face of. Right. Uh, the LGBTQ yeah, I, yeah, I See, if you don't know, I don't know. You know what right. I'm saying? I don't, well, because, you know, I just, yes. But, it's I, a lot. I, but I don't care what nobody is. I just, yeah. I think that that's the only thing. Like, are they trying to be the face of that? Like, right. Are they pushing their narrative or a movement to mm-hmm. be in the front of that movement? Right. That's my only quote unquote issue. Where I, right. I don't have an issue with that either, but that's just the only thing I'm thinking about because they, it's so many different um, reasons why they're in the tabloids right now for yeah. issues or right. whatever the case right. may be. And um, that that's the only thing that kind of puzzles me a little bit. Well, I but think it's a blessing and a curse too, though. Yeah, you know, it could be either way. Either way, like I said, I know he had, I know Dwayne had a song come out. I'm not really sure what he was doing. He was rapping. That that don't need to happen though. Like I'm I'm, 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 I'm okay with everything, but rapping, that, like, <laughs> rapping, no, that right. That, I don't care who you, you, you can have. Rick Roll, I'm a Fifty Cent fan. Uh-huh. 50 cent. It's a no for me. I'm Period. never listening to no Let other Dwayne Wade Stop. song. <laughs> That might have pissed me off yeah. more than anything. <laughs> right. I, I'm beyond. I want, I want. I'd rather meet the sun. Wow. You know, I want to have the sun in the pocket. We have a time. Right. I don't know Dwayne Ray raps, but ever. he can't rap. No, ever. at all. Okay. No. Gotcha. No. Please no. <laughs> I'd rather sit through a Gabriel E movie. But what? Whoa! Whoa! Now she the homie. Oh. Um, nah, I hate every movie she ever. Yeah, I know. Me too. I'm trying, trying like, to PC right like, now. Like really? Too pretty. Play that so game. not even uh 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 uh, Bring it uh on. bad boys. Bad two? boys too. It oh, wasn't for count. 
Yeah, but it Why? wasn't it wasn't because of her. I like the movie, but yeah. she she definitely helped. I'm she not only gonna had lie. like three scenes. Nah, she was fine in that movie. I ain't gonna lie. It was more than three scenes, she but had the, okay. She had the uh, truck scene with the Haitians. We're driving on the like, expressway. Two kissing scenes with Will Smith. That was about it. The hotel scene. Um, nah, she was straight in there. She was, the you know, over. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a couple of okay. Well, yeah, that, not, yeah. not too many. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, yeah. But she didn't have no. She didn't have no. She didn't have no. She didn't have no great movies like. Besides that one, like he made a great. She did good in that um Christmas movie. A couple uh, years last back. holiday. I don't know. I don't know the name of it. Bro. With the with the chick that died of cancer and wait, was she in it? Nah, you see that was that's what, different. What, what I don't was know it? Movie, so. No, I'm the, about with Morris Chestnut and right, wasn't it? No, nah, she, she last what, holiday. What was she it? wasn't it? That was trash. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Was it? Wait, the holiday. No, not best man. It was. Yeah. The yeah. last holiday, I yeah. think it was it's called. called. The last holiday. Yeah, was that the best chick. Man too? I think that's what it was. Yeah. it was. It was a continuation. She was in it. No, that wasn't this man too. It. So it was. Wait. Okay. So I don't even think she was in the movie anymore. Yeah, but she wasn't. The chick that. Okay. Too so good to be her husband movie. was an NFL player. The wife had cancer. That's best man too, bro. No, it was something holiday. Yeah, I didn't, they didn't call it best man oh. too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah, but she's. Tr- she okay. Not, I'm sorry. She's not trash. <laughs> She's not that great of an actor. <laughs> she's not that great of an actor to me. She's okay, good. she's pretty though. And she's well, nice and chocolate, so you know. So that's well, all that matters. No, I'm just that's the topic movement. Now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be face I'm writing down all these next topics. Okay, I'm trying to be face of the franchise. Right, nice and chocolate. You know what I'm saying? That part. Yeah. Okay. Push, push my bring narrative. it back. Bring you it back. Bring it back. <laughs> trying to push my narrative. You know. No, um, last holiday was uh, Queen Latifah. Definitely not that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we I can't hear you over there. You got right. the mic. It sounds mad weird. But um, so. What I want to touch on uh, a little bit too is even your life after high school. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, you know, to me, from what I've known of you, like you've been pretty successful job wise. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me a little about that. Well, did you you finish high school? You, you so no, I dropped that out. Was, that was kind of wild. Yeah, you so, were smart, uh, and I was, and I dropped out. To be completely honest, because I, I wanted to work and I didn't have time. Like, ah. and they wouldn't allow me. Like, I didn't qualify for like early hour or anything like that. So like. So you was fed up the day I saw you. That's what it was. I probably was ahead and had enough. And I'm, I'm hot. I'm hot. You was fed up. That's what it was. To the end of the road. <laughs> I like that. I got you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It was over. It was over. It was. It was cut. Cut. I'm out of here. Damn this. I got to go clock in. I got to go to work. I'm on my last point. <laughs> my last attendance point for work not school <laughs> so the funniest thing i bought my first car at 15 years old 300 dollars, 1982 toyota tercel my mother had no idea my father nobody had no idea got one of my friends to um actually get me an insurance policy on us i had insurance all that good stuff right and i would park at big lots so i would park <laughs> next to the school right because i obviously couldn't park at school because you know you had to be a senior with senior parking right. this is 2004 as so i was what junior so um I would park and then, you know, right after lunch, because <laughs> I would, of course, eat my lunch, I would like walk through like child development, you know, sneak through the gate, you know, go over to big lots, pull out go and I would go to work. And I was working at the time and um, I don't know why or how, but they thought that I was 18. And I had like used my ID and everything, you know, because I had an ID and all this. And I, I, I swear, to my right hand guy won't tell, I won't say where I worked, but they thought that I was. And I How was old were you for real? I was seventeen. Yeah, what a time! Well, I was sixteen. Though. I was sixteen, so it was like two thousand four. Couldn't happen now. They need everything. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. no, I know what it was. So everyone thought that I was eighteen, right? But I was sixteen. Um, but you know. They they hired sixteen year olds, but like part time or something. So anyway, I was hired, but they allowed me to work like full time because I think that they just assumed I was. I've always been real tall, and you know, you know, whatever. So long story short, I worked right. I was doing telemarketing. I was making really good money, and I was still in school, and I was skipping like you just three said, days a week. And one day you just waited like answer these phones and i was like i'm diploma. done with this yeah because i was ripping it like i was doing really really good like my commission checks was like banging like i was doing really really good and so uh, <laughs> <laughs> my Goodbye. classmates are trying to earn a degree so they can get a job so they can make good money so they can go and buy themselves clothes they working at the mall on the weekend they flipping burgers after school at mcdonald's i'm not doing that oh, okay feel, okay I see i'm not doing that here. right so for me it was kind of one of those things like you know y'all y'all working tour or something i can go and do this now you know <laughs> i'm doing it <laughs> i bought my own car you know what i'm saying so 
<laughs> like and by this point, and I had already had it, you know, a year before. Like, yeah, it was funny. Like my my all my classmates that knew I had a car, like it was a small like. So you didn't hear what I said. It's an 82 Tercel. I'm 6'3", and I have been since like I was 15 years old or something like that. So I'm in this little bitty car. That's I got wild. Tasmanian Devil seat covers and floor mats. You tricked it out, too. That's it funny. was tricked out. You know, back then, I think Exhibit, what's the Exhibit? Pimp Whatever, my ride. doing Pimp the Pimp My Ride. So you know, it was like that was. <laughs> yeah, my son, you pimped it right. You pimped it. <laughs> you pimped it right. So it was, you know, that was my life. Like, I was balling. You hear me? <laughs> That's funny, though. That's funny. I had them hoes. So anyway, so no. <laughs> So, so no, so, so no, it was a great time, right? So I was working, ah, pulling my weight and school was in the way. So <laughs> like, I ain't have time for that. So, um, looking back though, I don't regret any of it. And it's funny because I've never publicly like said, you know, Hey, I dropped out of school. Like I've never been known as yeah, a dropout. No, I see I've never said that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so. There is a homecoming for GED uh, 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 holders as well. But so, no. So, I make no mistake. Like, I've never told anybody, like, and it's funny because, like, people say, yeah, because you graduated in 2005. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm class 2005 to everybody. <laughs> I do all participation with class 2005. Let that be known now. So, I participate with them. I know, but they all know, right? Because that was the only, in, that was the first and only time that they made them um, graduate outside at the school. Like, they did that one uh. school year, and it was that just to so have class of 05. So, it really helped. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. <laughs> So really, I mean, that kind of helped me. I was really a blessing. I'm telling you, things just kind of divinely happened in my life. Especially, man. And so I'm, I mean, I'm a special kid. So it was that day, and I was like, you know, y'all remember I had got sick, and um, I was outside throwing up, you know, so I didn't get to, you know, walk the stage, but I was there. Y'all remember? <laughs> we were outside. And it was like, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so anyway, so yeah, I dropped out, and um, I worked. And so I, I, I like to tell people that that wasn't my first job. Like, I've worked since I was 14 years old. Back in Virginia, I worked on weekends at Wendy's. Um and my dad, you know, business, I also worked. So I had worked, and so I was used to making that kind of, like, making good money. Like, so when I came back home, I had to find a way to make that work. Right, right. And it took over here because, you know, like I said, the household was completely different in Virginia. Up there, working was a privilege. Down here, for me, working was a necessity. What What did your mom say when she found out that you chose working over um, school? Did she ever find out? Well, she did. Um but this was also during a period where you know, she was still battling drug addiction. So okay, she was okay. aware. She was, but it benefit her it benefited her that I was working. They had that bread. Yeah. And <laughs> had that bread. And I mean, the following year I got my license and hers had been suspended for a long time and she just had been <laughs> driving and bucking. So, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, I had a car and she didn't. Ah, uh, okay. You know, I had a license and she didn't. So it was kinda like she working, you know. And um I wasn't asking her for anything, which my mom, she spoiled me, I mean my whole life, but you know, still, she spoiled me with what she had, which right. which always made our relationship so so tight. You know what I'm saying? Um, with what she didn't have, she spoiled me. You know, so but I was always a self started and always determined, and so I think that she realized that I needed that for myself because I got my first apartment at 18, so just a year later, mm. you know, two years later, you know what I'm saying? So literally, I turned 18 like that Friday, Monday, I signed my first lease. And I've never been back home since 18 years old. Never had a roommate. Never lived with anybody else. Never went back to live with parents or anything else. Always had the bread. Oh, I mean, so since literally. How, 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 but how do you keep that up? Like, how do you keep that folk that that they maintain that? So, um, so from that very first Being job so here in Augusta, um, once you get a taste of the good life, and by good life I mean that when you come from you know having just enough to more than enough, once you taste that, you don't ever want to lose that. You know what I'm saying? And you will do. Anything necessary to maintain that, right? And for me, I like the feeling of not being... Well, for one, I hate the feeling of being told no. And that's obviously been the case since I was a child. Like, I don't like no, right? So for me, I feel like if I if I earn it, you can't take it, mm. right? Because you have to justify why I can't have it anymore. And I can I can fight you for it because I earned it. And I have proof that I earned it. And so I put in the work. I did so and so so. So I have documentation to show that I did X, Y, and Z. So this is mine. I earned it. You can't take that from me, right? Whereas my 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 friends' parents were saying, get your education because once you have that, you know, once you get that college degree, once you get that's something they can never take away. Yeah, but that ain't earning you a check. Yeah, I mean, it could. You see <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, in my opinion, like education for me, and this is just me. Like, I, I support education for those who have gotten it. But by 2009, most of my high school classmates were graduating college in 2009. We graduated. So they, we, because I had walked the stage back. 
graduated high school in 2005. <laughs> so by 2009, most of them had finished their four-year degree around that time, right? Well, while, when they were graduating in 2009, I was making forty and fifty thousand dollars a year. You know what I'm saying? And so they're they're starting in in the in in, in the working field, making twenty five and thirty five, maybe forty thousand dollars, right? And I've been working, like putting in work. And by this time, I'm a manager, I'm a supervisor, I'm this. I'm. Th- I've worked for major companies like J.P. Morgan Chase, you know, and Comcast, Fortune 500 companies, you know, before the age of 25, where I was making sixty and seventy thousand mm. dollars without a degree. And at that time, honestly, not even a high school diploma yet, because I got that later. And th- and I really only got that just because I didn't want to be the one to not have it, you know. To gotcha. I didn't want to ever get to a place because nobody ever questioned it. To this day, people, you know, would think that I guess and I think they assume that I have like a, a bachelor's degree and a master's and this because when they look at my resume that you would think that it would have been required. But even before I went and got my, you know, GED, like I was getting these jobs and, you know, it would say high school diploma or GED and I would just check off GED, you know, <laughs> who's going to, you know, who's going to check it? You know what I'm saying? And so I got those jobs based on my experiences. But being back here in Augusta, you know, speaks volumes volumes of that, because shortly after high school and, you know, started starting to work, I moved out to Houston, Texas. And, um, you know, before that, it was call centers here and there and and all this kind of stuff. And actually, you know, where I work now, I had applied when they first opened back then, right before moving to Houston. And some things happened and I didn't end up getting to start. And so I moved to Houston and it was like doors just are opening up immediately when I got there. So all the jobs that I had had here in Augusta before that. Um, they didn't compare, you know, to the type of money that was ahead of me when I moved out there. Right, right. And so I started working out there. And um, from there, it was like the sky was the I mean, was literally the limit. And every job that I applied for, every time I applied for a promotion, every time I want to be a manager, every, I got it. I got it. And I got it within five and six months. Like three to six months is, is has been my experience with, with being promoted to, you know, leadership, management and all that kind of stuff. So you kind of like when you go somewhere, you kind of got to. Uh a standard of, of, of or expectation of what, what you're going to do when you get there. Absolutely. Like, got you. Absolutely. Got you. And I make it known. I make no mistake about it. And I feel that I'm the best man for the job everywhere I am. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have applied if I didn't feel that I would be the best man or that I had what it take or what they needed there. And, and it has reigned true every absolute place I've been. I have excelled and exceeded the expectations. So what brought you back to Augusta once mm-hmm. you worked out there in Houston and all that? So I first came back to Augusta in 2012. Um, at the time, my grandmother was sick. Um, she and my mother was now living together, um, at that time, um, in our childhood. Well, you know, whatever. So they were living together and, um, she had been sick. And then I I was tired of being 11 hours away in Houston, you know what I'm saying? Because I was so afraid that something would happen and I would be too far, far. you know, and, and she was my heart. Like we talked literally every day, even while I was out there. And, and that was another thing that they encouraged me to go because my parents, well, my mother and my grandmother, they always encouraged me to go and experience everything I wanted, wherever it was, you know, I don't care if it was in Africa, go, you know, Mm -hmm. just don't bring cooties back. And, you know, and and they they were so shady because they were like, and don't get nobody pregnant out there. And I'm like. (laughs) <laughs> y- y'all doing this again this year? So we're going to do this at Thanksgiving again this year. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, so we're doing that. So, yeah. So that will be their only thing is, you know, be be successful in life and be able to take care of yourself. And um, and, and you're always welcome home. So come when you want. You know what I'm saying? Um, and for me, I always felt like I had to 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 prove to myself that I could be who this that this this module could work. This model could work anywhere like I could apply right. me anywhere right. and it'll work and I've proven that to be true so anyway grandma got sick um I think she was playing possum because time I moved back like she was walking around and, and everything like better than my mom was like and I was like what's happening here like you know my mom you know sometimes seemed like she was the older one of the two and my grandma was 83 when she passed you know so anyway um she got sick then she was perfectly fine so um I didn't move back um to Augusta I moved to Atlanta okay. um when I came back from Houston and then, you know, I, I was spending all my vacations and stuff. I'll never forget here in Augusta. Like I would be off from up there or whatever. And I would drive home, you know? And, um, and I was like, you know what? I, I must miss being like, I must need this. I must need to be home. And I, and I love the feeling of being home. Like, I love everything about it. And so I decided in May of 2012 to move home. And I, um, I, you know, was here just a couple of months and then suddenly my grandma had an asthma attack and passed. So oh, it man. was like, <sighs> It was perfect timing. Like it was, it was divine. It was divinely designed for me to be home when I was. Um, and so I was home, and I love being home. And now my mom is living by herself, and you know, um, you know, she's lost her very best friend because she was my mom was the only you know daughter, and and they were very 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 close. And so you know, I started doing more things. I, I you know I would do breakfast with my mom, do lunch and you know dinners, and we would just do random stuff. Um, 
but then the following year she took sick suddenly and just died (laughs) my mom so I lost literally the two of the most influential closest women you know in my life in one year and I was home to experience that and I'm so glad that I was because you know no other reason for me to be home other than to just you know obviously for that because life was good in Atlanta and in Houston so anyway um when my mom died I lost it I mean I see you talk about it a lot. So I, I do. I wasn't sure, like, yeah. what the relationship was like, but I know I see you talk about it like a lot, a lot. Is yeah, it, like, a release for you when you talk about it or, like, on, like a post about it, something like that? Well, I think that for me is those who we keep alive in our heart and in our everyday life never die. And I think that over time I've learned that the more that I'm, I find a way to memorialize her, um, she and my grandmother, um, I feel that, they're always with me because there's so many ways and, 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 and things that I do that is just like them. I mean, I cook really, really well, you know, just like them. I sing really, really well. My mother was a beautiful singer. Um, you know, so there's so many things that, that I do that's so much like them having her present, like she, you know, her name on my tag and, you know, my, my phone, you right. know, the pictures and pictures all in the house. You know, I got big old, big old enlarged pictures and, you know, memorial walls, you know, <laughs> all my friends that have an old auntie house. Cause you know, whatever. Um, it's, it's always neat and it's perfect and, and, and all that, and I don't let their kids come and visit. So anyway, um, so the thing is for me, it's important to, um, honor her that way because, you know, she was literally like, you know, my very, very best friend and it keeps me from being sad because after she died, you know, I had a suicide attempt. So, um, you know, after I lost my grandma, I, I, I kind of felt a responsibility to be stronger for my mom, you know, cause I've, I've always been the, the, the strongest one in the family and it's weird because i'm the youngest one the youngest grandchild the youngest child um but i'm always the one that handled all of their business you know so any anytime that even to my dad like even when we didn't have a great relationship him my sister would you know she's she's she was closer to him because she's a daddy's girl you know I feel. right right but um when they needed business handled, it was always me you know so I, when my grandma died you know my uncles were devastated my mom was lost and devastated you know and um they couldn't plan her funeral like my uncle you know he took care of everything you know for you know for his making sure all the financial you know items were in order but they couldn't plan like they didn't even have a relationship with the pastors that i did the so churches got, that i did the you know the the choir members and you know reaching out to who gonna do the repast who's gonna you know prepare the food i ha- i've i have those relationships because i've always been with them you know what i'm saying right right so you know it was on me to you know write out the obituary and all that kind of stuff whereas my mom couldn't so for after her passing, I, I didn't have time to really just grieve and be sad. You know, it was handle business. You know, they they losing it. You, <laughs> you know say, what I'm saying? So you say you probably uh, had to grieve both of them after your mom. So and that's when at it came to a time. head. That's when it came to a head because you know, like I said, grandma died. Like? You know, July of 2012. My mom died um, November 20th, 2013. So a little over a year. But in that whole year, you know, that we after we lost my grandmother, um, I didn't grieve. And so when my mom left, it was like, they're both gone. I have nothing else to do. So I'm also curious, like, how was your life then? I know you was, you know, grieving. Mm-hmm. Were you still working at this time? Because now you, from what, from what we what we hear from you, you working since 14 at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you working nonstop, making yeah. all this money nonstop. You, you maintain a certain lifestyle. Well, so when I was away, I mean, I had a savings account out of this world. Oh, I forgot you was a saver. Tired, yeah. I, I had a savings account out of this world. And so... You know, I, I, so when I moved back home in 2012, I actually got a job here in Augusta. Um, and it was the most money I had ever made in Augusta. I was making about $54,000 a year mm. at, a, at a, a company here in Augusta. I was a business sales administrator. And it, it was only, I only could get that job after being away for so many years and working so many other places. I had to build up my resume because keep in mind, you know, this time I didn't, I, well, even now I don't have a college degree. You know, right, so I'm right, competing right. here locally. Most people here, they get in these good jobs and they keep them until they die or, <laughs> or, or, or retire. Yeah, yeah. And they retire at 40 in Augusta. You know, so 40 years they retiring. You know yep. what I'm saying? I'm like, leave. You know, <laughs> they get a position here and they never want to get out. And, and it, it, it bothers me because it doesn't allow the younger generation an opportunity to see what's possible here. And so that's why I think we have so many people that dog, you know, being here or whatever. It's, well, they really don't have the opportunities. Well, where are you going to get them? You know, they're not building enough places to make enough room. So, you know, if you look at the city of Augusta and how many employees are down there, like some of the department heads, 
They've been there too long. Nothing against them. I know a lot of them, and I love them. I love you all. I'm all for this, you know, Juan oh, Augusta. Say, I mean, you got to too. In the climate, you get a good job, and it pay well. You got you to gotta hang on to it. Because some people, well, everybody not like you, and they're not ambitious. Exactly. So they might be in the same boat where they don't have the right. certain criteria. So right. it's like, if I get this, I got to yeah. hold on to it because I and ain't I, getting I've no I've had else. this job 25 years. There ain't no young whippers never going to come in <laughs> here. And then not to mention, if I don't have this job, where else am I going to go? Yeah. You know, so there, you have to have upward mobility. I've always been blessed to be in places where people needed me. Mm-hmm. And the positions that I've had, like they needed me, you know, they needed me to come in and change the culture. They needed me to come in and change the dynamics of the workplace, you know, and things like that. Um, and 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 I've naturally always been a disruptor, you know. So I, I think that I've been most a, a most valuable asset to all the companies that I've had away from being to Augusta. That when I mo- decided to move back home, it was like you worked where, you know, how, you know what I'm saying. And then the the afterthought is, do you have a degree? You know what I'm saying? And yeah, by then yeah. it's like, well, okay, I'll tell you what. We might can't ain't, we may we may not be able to start you at 60, but we can start you at 57.3. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> give it here. You know, <laughs> I'm in Augusta. You know what I'm saying? Word. I can live, you know, uh in Cash County, which of course I never would, you know. But um <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Slim, Well, you know, I'm and just saying love Cash County. But um, you know, when I be on my little date naps and stuff, people can't drive out that far, and I'm not gonna drive that far because <laughs> they don't have cars. So you know, <laughs> I, I don't be wanting to go out that far. So you got to stay local, got to stay closer. Yeah, so anyway, you always mention you being at um, Bar and Village, but I ain't gonna get into that. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, and in, in the bottom. But anyway, you know, I'm from the suburbs. So so um, you know, I just feel that. I have to ask this question because this is my old one. No, like when you post that stuff, do people actually take offense to that? Like, did you, when you say that, like, I don't know. I be wondering because you know Barn Village is like supposed, you know supposed to be like this, well here's a the thing place. I am known out there like I did hang out there I used to hang out there you know so that's the funniest thing like I've had mad respect like, let me just be very very clear like who people see me you know be on Facebook is who I am in real life and I think that most people know that and the a lot of times I I turn into a you know a, a comedic post something that's real life <laughs> so a lot of times um, when I'm making fun of something. I'm able to speak from, you know, to it or from it because I've been there. You know what I'm saying? So gotcha. not all of it. And, and one of my old coworkers used to say, somebody told me to be to pay more attention to what you post because you don't really be, you know, people be laughing, thinking you playing, but you be serious. Well, some of it really do be serious. But, you know, <laughs> you would never know. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That's kind of, that's the art of, of, of being who I am. But, um, yeah, I used to hang out out there. My cousins grew up out there. You know, so, I, so as, from a child, and you know, and all over the city. So, you know, in the projects or whatever. Like, I always tell people I have a respect for the projects and so forth. And, we, of course, you know, you're from New York. So, you know, you don't see projects how we see projects. But anyway, yeah, yeah, but, um, hey, but for me, like, you know, I, my cousins live there. So, you know, my mom made it her business to make sure I spent weekends down there, you know, spending the night, you know, oh, um, we go. down see, there see. walking, <laughs> walking across the street to the, you know, to the uh, grocery store, you know, to get 50 packs of hot dogs. Like, <laughs> you know, in the projects, like that was life, you know, with the paper food stamps. Like we didn't have those at home. So I was like, oh, I get to do this. You know, um, they I always felt that they had more programs like in the in the in the um, urban communities than what we had. You know, uptown, we didn't really have community centers that like had after school programs like the yeah. W.T. Johnson Center downtown. Miss Pat Jones, shout out to rest in peace, Pat Jones downtown. Like she meant something in the projects to those kids. Like she 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 did a lot for those kids. And we didn't have those programs uptown, but we didn't really need them. We had parents that, you know. So anyway, I say all that to say that, um, yes, some of those folks be, be real life stories. But I just, you know, put a little spin on it. So, uh, so I keep. Bomb village, you know? <laughs> Ow. You a wild guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> Ow. So anyway. <laughs> all right. So uh, I do want to 